What's up, guys? Matt Brown here for the Lions.com, PlayPicks.com. Let's talk a little Sunday night football between the Steelers and the Chargers. Got some thoughts here on a couple of props, maybe a side play as well. As always, everything we do is absolutely free. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button. If you are a subscriber, you're automatically eligible for a big giveaway we're going to do before the end of the year. Thanking all of you guys for the support. Really do appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up also and let us know in the comment section how you're reading this game. Kind of an interesting spot right here on Sunday Night Football with a couple of teams that are pretty beaten up right now. So the Steelers injury report, you're going to know this name, TJ Watt, uh, out, their best player. Corner, Joe Hayden, also out for them. And then their left guard, Kevin Dotson, is also out for this Steelers team on the Chargers side of things. Looking a little bit better, but uh, on Saturday, on Sunday than it was on Saturday even, but uh, they activated Joey Bosa and Drew Tranquil, linebacker Drew Tranquil, off of the COVID-19 list. So barring any sort of setback, something like that, they should be able to play on Sunday night. That said, Jerry Tillery is out. Uh, he's, he's a defensive end, defensive tackle. Christian Covington is out. And then Linval Joseph is listed as doubtful. That is three defensive linemen that are uh, not going to be out there for this Chargers team, looking to be real thin on the defensive line. Corner Michael Davis is questionable, and the defensive tackle Justin Jones is also questionable. Uh, they're hoping he's going to be able to go to be pretty much the lone kind of guy on that interior there for the Chargers here on the defensive line. If we take a look, guys, we are sitting at six across the board right now. If you are looking to get down, you're not going to get a better line anywhere. So, uh, Get whatever your book of choice, you're going to find six total of 47 and a half. So what we have here is a Chargers team entering kind of really sputtering, right? I mean, they are leaking oil. There's no doubt about that. This was a team that was looking like one of the better teams in the NFL in the beginning of the season, and that has not really held up as we've come down the stretch here last over the last month or so. It's not necessarily anything you can really point to on the offensive side of the ball maybe it's just we were thinking that Justin Herbert was going to be just the uh you know infallible or something like that but he's he's come back down to earth a little bit right this offense in general has come back down to earth just a little bit and that's okay it's not like it's it's they were they were performing above expectation and so came back down to earth a little bit whenever you look at this offense it's still good though it's still one of the top 10 12 offenses in all of the NFL in pretty much all of the advanced statistics out there, the only thing they're really not all that great at is uh, is pass blocking right now. And what that's doing is you know, their pass block win rate is down to 23rd in the league. And so maybe that has a little bit to do with what's going on with Justin Herbert and why he's just a little bit off every now and then um, these days. Now, that being said, on Pittsburgh side of things, it looks like it's going to be Ben Roethlisberger. That seems to be whatever that seems to be what everyone thinks he did fly to this game separate from everybody else, but it was with the hopes that he was going to be activated and be able to play in this game. So we really have to look at it as if Ben Roethlisberger is playing and not necessarily that this is going to be the Mason Rudolph show. I'll scroll a little bit further if you want to take a look as to what's going on there. But yeah, I mean, so we kind of have to just look at this like it's going to be Big Ben. If this thing turns into if this thing turns into Mason Rudolph, then I don't see how you could really look towards Pittsburgh's way. But one of the things that Pittsburgh does have kind of going for them, right, is if you look, the defense is still playing good. Now, T.J. Watt's not going to be out there, but the defense is still playing good. And on the offensive side of the ball, the one bright spot really has been Najee Harris. And he is, you know, they're working him a ton. And he's getting a ton of action as a rookie, which all which we all thought that he would, right? They spent a first-round pick on him, and he has definitely been the workhorse and a dude that is not really splitting all that many carries at all with anybody else in the backfield. Fortunately, he's going up against the Chargers who have the worst run defense in all of the NFL. They can't stop anybody on the ground. And with Ben Roethlisberger coming back off of the, the COVID situation here, maybe he's a little bit fatigued. We heard Aaron Rodgers talk about last week that he was fatigued coming off of the COVID list. So I imagine they'll try to keep this thing a little bit under wraps here, a little bit closer to the vest, play this thing to Ben Roethlisberger's strengths, which is keeping it close to the line of scrimmage, dumping off, things like that, right? So I'm kind of in for the Najee Harris stuff we'll talk about in just a second. Listen, as far as the sides go, if I had to play this thing on the side, it's not in my account just yet. Maybe it will be, but I would take the points with Pittsburgh. I'd hold my nose and take the points with Pittsburgh. That is That defensive line for the Chargers is really, really banged up, and that's going to assist in keeping Ben Roethlisberger you know, where he's able to, to probably operate 
you know, in this office, it's limited as his skill set is, he's still going to be able to operate because I don't think there's going to be a ton of pressure coming his way. One of the things the offensive line has done for them as well is keep Ben Roethlisberger fairly clean. They're fourth in pressure rate allowed in the NFL. So that offensive line has been doing its job. Seventh in adjusted sack rate as well. And then with all those guys out or, you know, at least not 100% for the Chargers, I think Ben Roethlisberger is going to be able to operate in his limited capacity and keep this thing within six points. And so uh, with that defense playing, you know, at least up to, to par as well. So, again, I would, I would hold my nose and take the six points of Pittsburgh. I can't believe I'm even saying that. The stuff that I'm really more interested in, and, of course, you just uh, – you just go to the lines, and when you are over at the lines, you will see the little prop finder thing right there. So we'll click on the prop finder, find whatever you know, whatever your state is. But as I mentioned, that defensive line is busted up. You have a true workhorse in Najee Harris, and I'm going to play the over on his rushing yards. Um, this this defensive line has been giving up hundred yard rushers left and right. I mean, week in and week out, this Chargers team cannot cannot stop anybody on the ground. And like I said, I also believe that the game plan is going to be that which limits what Ben Roethlisberger does, right? I mean, he doesn't have much left in the tank as it is anyway. And the fact that he's been laid off here and and uh, and coming back off the COVID list, I think they will probably try to take at least some of that workload away from him and put it on Najee Harris. And so I do like the over on the rushing yards pretty good bit that is in my account if you wanted to split it up between that and the Russian receptions if you think that there's any chance that they could um, get down a ton in this game and just have to abandon the run altogether then you know you could maybe split it between the rushing and then the rushing and receiving because again he's still going to be out there on the field right he never comes off the field so even if they're down in this thing he's going to be catching passes and Najee Harris uh, really like the over on the rushing I would even play the over on the rushing and receiving. The other thing I'm looking at here, one that kind of jumped off the page to me as well, is... Oh, man, that's not going to... I guess i got to type in James here. So, James Washington, it's just... You're looking here at this receiving total, and I know, I know it's not a huge edge. I haven't projected more like 24 and a half yards. But I think I'm being pretty conservative here. Again, this is no Juju Smith-Schuster is gone for the season for this team. And again, I just truly believe the routes that Chase Claypool runs doesn't really fit Ben Roethlisberger's skill set anymore. And so James Washington being out there, he can get us there on you know he can get us there on two catches really to get us over the twenty and a half yards on this. So I do like the over on James Washington as well on his receiving yards. No props on the Chargers side of things. The offense has just been very tough to predict and very, very tough to kind of figure out where the the bulk of the targets and where the bulk of the stuff's going to go outside of just Keenan Allen. So I, no, no props for me on the Chargers side of things. And like I said, uh, total seems appropriate to me. If anything, I'd play the under. Maybe it's a tad high in that thing. Um, and I would take the points with Pittsburgh here on what will be a very, very interesting and very, very uh, gut check game for both of these teams. Because if they were either one of these teams loses, it's going to really set them back in this playoff race. So, guys, hope you get some winners here on Sunday night. Probably game's not going to be all that super exciting, but maybe we can win some bets along the way. Good luck here on Sunday Night Football.